we are going to install a battery shunt in this RV so that we can keep an eye on where all our power is going and why my battery keeps on dying. I have solar panels, I have a good lithium battery, and I have no idea where the power is going. We did an unboxing already in a different video of the shunt that we're going to install, and today we're gonna to put that shunt in this trailer. And we're gonna install a Victron Energy Smart Shunt. This ties in with all of our other Victron Energy systems that are installed on this trailer already. So we're sticking with that brand because it is so easy to use, especially with the included app, which we will walk you through as part of the install in this video. This is our battery box. So I have lithium batteries inside here, but the connections are right up here. And I'm thinking I'm gonna put that device right on here somewhere. Just wanna check for kind of the best location for it. So I'm gonna pull it out of the box and just line it up. So this is kind of everything that you're gonna need for the install. This needs to go somewhere. And it looks like kind of designed to go on, on that right there, actually. There's a little block there that looks like that's where you would put it there's another block right here which maybe that makes a little bit more sense i'm going to undo this battery you can see i do have this jumper wire that i'm going to use if you don't have a jumper wire then you can get one i'll put a link in the description where you can grab one of those from but let's just get this thing attached on here and do our connections so it looked like that was actually made exactly for this the holes lined up perfectly you can see there's little nubs there there was also little nubs on this one and i just used some self-tapping screws it's just soft plastic you just want to be careful you don't go in too far because the battery is inside here and you definitely don't want to end up drilling into that battery the bolt heads on these are the same size as on the battery post itself which is a 17 millimeter socket so i'm just going to loosen everything here I should be able to loosen with my fingers. I'm gonna turn that positive cable a little bit as well. Not coming in our way here. I don't like it. Now you guys can see much better what we're doing here. There we go. Now this is marked. This says load side, this says battery side. So the load side in our case is the black wire that came off of the trailer. So we're gonna put that one on first. Now we've got the ring on the bottom, the flat washer, and then the lock washer. And when we stick this down, we should have a beautiful little wire sandwich here. Next, we're gonna hook up our jumper wire, which is easy enough to do. I think I'm gonna put it like this. So again, we'll just get that started by hand. And then we'll use the socket 17 mil and then we're going to come under this like that with the lock washer and the nut now i didn't say it before but i do have the battery disconnect off for the trailer so there should be no load going through this at all right now you definitely want to be mindful of your positive and negative terminals here you don't want to short those out while you're doing this because that does go straight to the battery which would not be a good thing when i had that positive battery loose it would have been wise for me to hook up the positive battery on the shunt because this is what it uses to monitor the battery voltage now this is a fused wire that's what that little black thing is there so you do want to leave that somewhat exposed where you can find it but the first thing i got to do now is remove it you got to take it all the way off in my case, I'm running it kind of underneath all this stuff like that. And then the positive cable, we're going to run underneath there like that as well. And then we can stick our lock washer on. And that is the completed shunt install. So we've got the negative wire going in on the load side. We've got the battery minus wire going to the battery minus and we hooked up the positive. Gams go. Are you paying too much for Netflix, Spotify, Disney Plus, Crunchyroll, Duolingo, Canva, or Adobe? Gams go has you covered with premium shared subscriptions for a fraction of the price directly from the distributor. Yes, Gamsgo is the shared premium experience that you've been looking for that saves a ton of money. 
I personally use Gams Go for my Netflix, my Spotify, my Disney Plus, and my Crunchyroll subscriptions, and I have saved tons of money by switching to Gams Go. Switching to Gams Go is as easy as clicking the link in the description or up in the title card, which will take you to the main Gams Go website, select the services that you're looking for and buy them. But to show you how easy it is, we're gonna take 30 seconds and we're gonna sign up for Netflix. So we've clicked the affiliate link and I'm gonna click purchase now on Netflix. Now we have an option to buy three months or six months. I'm gonna buy a six month membership. I'm gonna say activate auto renewal because you don't wanna miss out anyway. Now in my case, I only need one profile. That means that I get one of the five included shared profiles with my Netflix account and I can install it on one device in my home. Do you have multiple devices in your home? You might want to switch to the five profiles option, which also unlocks multiple devices so that you can use all of your profiles across multiple devices. But in my case, one profile is plenty. Now this is the most important step. It's gonna say, do you have a promo code? Yes, I do. And the promo code is GEARS. We're gonna apply our promo code and it's gonna say, this is a valid promo code. We're gonna click to go to payment and then we're gonna enter in all of our details. This is a one-time payment of just $21.26. That is crazy cheap for premium Netflix on one device with one profile. I'm going to pay now. I'm gonna enter my credit card information and that's it. Once you've paid, you get immediate access to Netflix and it's as simple as logging into your Gamsgo account, getting the username and pass key, and then going to legit Netflix. Now it's gonna immediately say, well, who is this? Now I am account number three, Gears and Tech. And it's gonna ask for my pin code because I locked this down. Once I have my pin code in, now instantly I am in the full premium Netflix experience. This gives me HD Netflix, I can download it, and it's that simple. And it works the same on all your other favorite streaming platforms. This is truly an amazing deal, you don't wanna miss it. Click the link down below to grab your deal. Now, if we come over here, we can see the Bluetooth light is flashing that we should be able to connect. So now when we open the app, the first thing we're gonna see is I have a smart solar device and a smart shunt. I mean, the sun's setting right now. I have basically no power going in. My battery is not charged really at all. It's at 13.07 volts. So you can see the shunt showed up right here and the signal is strong. So I'm gonna pull this up this is the first time that I will be seeing the shunt. So it's gonna ask me to pair. Now it's gonna tell you, hey, you're using the default code, so just be careful. And I'm gonna say, don't warn me again, and I'm not gonna change my pin code. So if you guys are ever near me, you can check the state of my battery as well. I can see the history. There won't be any history on here because I just installed this, and you can see trends. Now again, there's no trends because I just installed it, but if I turn the battery on, which I'm gonna do now, you're going to see, I'm gonna start pulling current from here. And you can see 0.51 amps and seven watts of power is being pulled right now. That's because my trailer just turned on and my fridge is about to fire up, which I should see that current go up closer to like eight amps once the fridge does turn on. Now the fridge might be cold enough that it won't turn on right now, with that battery switch on right there, I'm expecting to see about eight amps when my fridge turns on, but my fridge is already cold, so it probably won't pull all that power right now. What I'm gonna do is leave this for a day, let the batteries top up all the way, and then I can monitor this a lot better to get a much, much better sense of what's going and what's coming, and then start to track down any currents that are wayward currents. So that's really the biggest thing is just keeping track of where all that power is going because up until now, I had no idea. I could only see the battery voltage dropping on the trailer, but I couldn't see where that power was going to. So now that I have the ability to find out where it's going, I can start to take steps to make the power regenerate faster. And in a different video, you'll see us install our battery charger, our DC to DC battery charger, which will let us recharge it much faster, especially when the solar panels aren't keeping up. If you haven't seen that video yet, be sure to check it out because it will certainly solve a lot of your battery problems, especially when you're off grid camping. 
Hey, thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video. We hope you enjoy the content in this video and we'd love to have you come back. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And for those subscribers who are looking for that extra special thing that you can do to support this channel, consider joining our members group. That's where we're building this community, the Gears and Tech community, where we can all enjoy content together. You'll get special perks, which we'd love for you to check out by clicking the link down below. For those of you who are just happy to watch the video, that's okay too. You can check out some of our other content right over here, where we've got some previous videos that have already been uploaded and enjoyed by many of our viewers already. We do hope to see you again, 